This is the Lightning Rod Weaver build, and I use the sword focus instead of dagger in the main hand because of the better utility, survivability, and mobility provided by the sword. Dagger has much more damage, but can be easily focused because many of the mobility skills on dagger with weaver are hard to access through double attuning to fire and earth. And unlike in PvP, where you can expect even fights, World vs. World has a much greater emphasis and requirement for disengage and the Polaric Leap is better in World vs. World where you can often port to a targeted object in the distance to give you amazing escape potential. Lightning Rod, as you may have guessed, is the main trait of this build. It deals damage and weakness to targets you CC, 
This means you can use long CC chains that will whittle down your opponent, which can seem very uninteractive considering there was a massive balance patch that tried to remove damage from CCs. Of course, this build gets hard countered by stability, which makes it a better build for roaming, but there are a lot of skills that can deal damage without requiring the damage from Lightning Rod. So let's get into the traits. In Air Magic, I take Ferocious Winds because I run Speed Runes, which eliminates the need for one with air super speed. If I did run a tankier version of this build with durability runes instead of speed runes, you would take the super speed trait instead. Raging Storm gives you 10% more damage on crits while you have Fury and you'll be getting Fury when you crit. This is better than Storm Soul because a lot of your damage is done through the CC itself or Lightning Rod, which means you won't be doing too much of your damage while they are CC'd. Storm Soul is less damage but longer CCs in other words and we want more damage modifiers. Of course you will be taking Lightning Rod which will deal damage when you CC which many of your abilities will CC and you also give out 3 seconds of weakness which is a very strong condition for countering power classes which increases their chance to fumble by 50% or in other words do a lot less damage on their attacks and reduce their endurance or dodge regeneration by 50% as well. In Arcane, take Arcane Restoration because the sustain it gives is needed and Vigor can come from other sources. Elemental Attunement gives boons when you swap attunement depending on which attunement you go into. It's great for the long protection you gain from Earth. In Water you get regen over time and the swiftness duration you'll want from Air Attunement. Elemental Lockdown gives you boons when you CC someone depending on your attunement. Mostly this gives you the rest of the fury uptime you need, but it can give you a good amount more protection too. Evasive Arcana is very key to this build survivability. It gives an effect on dodge depending on your attunement. Fire giving burn and air giving blind are okay, but water gives about a 2k heal and it gives a single Condi cleanse, so you'll want to dodge at least once while in water attunement. The weaver traits I take are superior elements. You give weakness to the next target you hit with a dual attack, which is your three skills while attuned to two different elements on a 10 second internal cooldown, which is honestly pretty bad, but the trait also gives 15% more crit chance to weaken targets, which has really good synergy with the weakness you get from Lightning Rod. This is very important for getting the crit chance you need without being too squishy. I take Swift Revenge because it's more swiftness duration and more damage while you have swiftness. But Bolstered Elements, which gives you barrier when you go below 50% HP, can be very good as well because it's only a 70 second internal and will save your life so many times that losing the 10% damage is kind of worth it. You could definitely use this in the tankier version of the build. However, I play more aggressively and mobile, so I like the extra damage and swiftness with speed runes to play more opportunistically. Finally, I take Invigorating Strikes because you won't be single attuning very often, so you don't really want elements of rage. And the vigor you gain from dual attacks will give you more dodges, and dodges give barrier lots of sustain that you want. The equipment that I use is Crusader Armor and everything else is Marauder. So if you can't get Crusader you can just go full Marauder, but the toughness and healing power from Crusader is very useful for helping you survive because Ellie's are the squishiest class and if you play as a melee elementalist you're going to feel lots of pain. The healing power also isn't very much. But one thing people have a misconception about is that the healing power needs to be high for it to be worth investing in at all. This is just wrong. You need many skills that heal and your skills need to have high healing power coefficients for healing power to be worth investing. But whatever amount you invest in is fine. Ellie has plenty of skills that scale with healing power, the regeneration and evasive arcana from water attunement, barriers scale with healing power, and all of the active healing over time from casting skills and swapping attunements 
will scale with healing power. With precise infusions and food, this gives around 50% crit chance. With superior elements and fury, you will go up to around 85% crit chance, which is one of my favorite thresholds for crit chance because I am never lucky. I take speed runes for the 66% movement speed while you have swiftness, which helps you to land a lot of your abilities, kite and position yourself, and just gives a bit more vitality to make up for some of the crusader pieces which lack it. Energy and cleansing sigils are pretty standard on the weapon because it's one of your few ways to cleanse conditions and dodging will give you a ton of benefits on this build. So every 9 seconds or every other attunement swap you can get these sigils to proc. The food that I use is the steak with winterberry sauce or the plate of truffle steak and you can also of course use the ascended version which will give 10% damage reduction. The Signet of Restoration is definitely the highest sustain heal because it procs off of basically anything you do. Dodging counts as casting a spell, swapping attunements counts as casting a spell, even some of your traits that proc on swapping attunements or dodging count as spells so you double dip into your Signet very often. You want to be spamming as many skills as possible to keep your Signet procking constantly. Even when there's nothing to hit, you should spam your one skill just to heal. It can be very demanding and carpal tunnel inducing, so just remember that skill queuing exists so you can leisurely press your one skill and the next attack will go off immediately after your last. In other words, you don't need to murder your keyboard. Lightning Flash is a must for escaping and setting up burst combos. Twist of Fate is your only stun break so make sure to save it to avoid damage, not just to break stuns that aren't life-threatening to you. Signet of Air can also be used because it's a much lower cooldown stun break and it'll give a little bit of blind and vulnerability. But often in situations where you need a stun break, you need a little more survivability than just a stun break, so the added evade helps. Then there are the two conjures. Earth Shield gives you vitality and toughness while holding it. The auto chain is kind of clunky, but if you make it to the third strike of the auto chain, you will throw out the shield and it will come back for a boomerang effect that can hit twice, but it will also deal double damage while you have barrier. And weavers have lots of ways to get barrier. Mostly you get barrier from dodging an earth shield, or if you successfully block an attack with your two skill, or if you successfully pull in enemies with your four skill. And it pulls in from really far away giving lightning rod damage. The 3 magnetic surge is a leap skill that will hit really hard and daze giving it extra lightning rod damage. It also gives a magnetic aura which will reflect projectiles at the start of the skill which is nice because even if you get interrupted you can still reflect projectiles. Finally you have the 5 skill fortify which forces you to stand still but gives you invulnerability. This means you can use it while you have conditions on you to wait out their duration or until your cleansing sigil is ready to proc. Conjure Fiery Greatsword has a decent auto attack that channels in any direction. The 3 skill, Fiery Whirl, is an evade that moves you very quickly and does more damage the longer you are on top of them. Positioning this skill is very important to getting kills efficiently. If you're up against a wall, you can whirl into it and do multiple attacks into it, but generally people don't go near walls when they see you have a fiery greatsword. You can also use it while immobilized, and that acts the same way as a wall. You just whirl in one place and can do like 10k or more damage. Also using lightning flash, while using the fiery whirl, can reposition you to make a second pathing through an enemy for essentially double damage. The fiery rush skill is just a leap that deals a lot of damage on the final strike. Both of these skills, when used without a target, can be useful for getting away from fights you have no chance of winning. The 5 skill just places down a pulsing AoE, which is good for zoning and cleaving down bodies. Your conjure skills will last for 30 seconds, and you will place an extra conjure on the ground. Both will disintegrate after 30 seconds. But if you drop your first conjure, 
before it expires. You can pick up the second one and the duration of the second one will still be 30 seconds after you pick it up. So you can extend the duration that you have a conjure to almost double the original. Unlike Fire Weaver, where you can just go into Fire Attunement every other swap or fresh air, which always ends up in air, the Sword Lightning Rod Weaver has damage spread through all of its attunements. Combined with two conjure weapons and get one of the most difficult to learn builds in the game. However, I will show off some skill priorities, combos, and tricks that will help you understand this build. When I'm running around preparing for fights, I often swap through air and earth attunement. You do not gain the boon from swapping into an attunement twice that you're already in, so generally you're not single attuning, except for the double air, which gives you access to quantum strike. So I will start in air usually, and when I swap into air, that gives me access to Polaric Leap. Open with Polaric Leap, which ports you to the target and will daze them, giving you weakness from Lightning Rod and enabling your Fury uptime. Make sure to use this within the 600 range so it hits, rather than getting too trigger happy and using it just to get in range. After, I like to use Gale Strike for another CC. At this point, you will be baiting out some stun breaks or dodges. Then you want to go into fire attunement, which will place air attunement skills on your 4 and 5, which means Gale, one of the strongest single target CCs in the game, is available. It's a 4 second knockdown in World of the World, and it's unblockable. This is your biggest combo enabler. So you'll go for a Gale, and then you'll use your fire 2 or fire 3, depending on your distance to the target. You prefer to use Pyro Vortex first because it pulses more damage over time than Flame Uprising does, but you can close the gap with the Fire 2 first if you need. From there you can go into Earth Attunement because they'll no longer be CC'd or would have stun broken the Gale by now and the protection of time is good to get rolling. You can cast Lava Skin which will give you Pulsing AoE and Barrier and double tap the Fire Shield which will give you the transmute and that will give you a little bit of damage and might. Earthen Vortex has a very large power damage scaling. You can choose to use it for damage or you can save it for later for the evade and combo finisher. At this point you decide whether you want to go back into air attunement and go for a polaric leap or you want to go into water attunement. If you go into water attunement you can cast the dual attack Natural Frenzy, which when used in melee, has a greater chance to hit and can do plenty of damage. So let's go over the basic combo again. You start in Air Earth and you'll go with the Polaric Leap, then Gale Strike, swap to Fire, and then use Gale into Fire 2, Fire 3, swap to Earth, use your Earthen Vortex or don't, and then use your Lava Skin into Fire Shield. And then from there you can go into Air or you go into Water. Now when you are in Water Attunement, you need to know a combo to maximize your sustain. You want to make the most out of the water field created by your water too. So while in water, you want to use Natural Frenzy or Shearing Edge if you went into air before you went into water. Then dodge once because you get some good healing and cleansing while in water and you dodge. When your attunement swap is almost off cooldown, you can use your water too and Earth 4 if you want the extra blast, and then swap to Earth, and if an enemy walks inside your water field, you can use the Water 5 to blast it, and then dodge from outside your water field to inside for the Earth Evasive Arcana Blast, and then use Earth 2 for a ton of healing. So that'll look like this. So, Water 2, do the blast, dodge in, 
and then Earth 2. And you get a lot of healing from that. From there, the paths really diverge and you can really go anywhere, but you should know where your reflects are. So you have your Air 4 and your Earth 4. So the Earth 4 gives you a aura of reflect and the Air 4 gives a projectile block area for your team. And you also have the reflect of the magnetic aura on the three skill in your Conjure Earth Shield. If you do end up not knowing what you're doing, generally just swapping attunements and pressing the three skill will give you the best results. And then just know the basic damage combos that I just went over and the basic healing combo and you should be fine. So I'm going to show three situations here. One is going to be a 1v1 with a tanky class. So I'm going to show how to sustain a little bit more. Another is going to be how to survive versus more aggressive 1v1s and then an outnumbered situation. So this first one is me 1v1ing a core guardian. Core Guardians have a lot of retaliation damage, so I'm going to be basically taxed of my health this entire 1v1, so I have to play very efficiently with my sustain to be able to survive long enough to get the kill. So a lot of that has to do with my positioning and not taking unnecessary damage. So when I'm fighting against a class that I'm technically faster than, I don't want to be taking hits that I could avoid even though I want to be trading damage with them. I always want to be getting more progress towards the kill, but not always does that mean you have to be taking damage because a lot of your skills can be used while not in melee range, and so therefore you should be getting positioning to basically not get hit while using those skills, and that will allow you to get a lot of sustain while not taking counter pressure at the same time. And here I'm doing a little bit of a water combo and yeah, I'm just sticking to the target. Whenever I see they use a symbol, I obviously don't want to fight in that. Whenever they use one of their leap skills that blind, I try to avoid that because that trades two to one. And I go into the magnetic shield here and get a lot of damage off. Obviously my CCs are gonna be very important when they're low. I pick up my second magnetic shield, which is gonna be really good because that gives me a lot of toughness and vitality and pretty decent damage. Uh, I drop it and I go into a little bit of a earth combo there. Even though I'm in the lead, I know that the Guardian's heal skill will give them healing when they use it for how much damage they do. So they just use it, they use their meditation heal. So I really don't want to be trading damage with them because they're just healing back up. And I land a really good Gale, but they have a stun break. Now I have to be careful because I'm really low and if I get hit by like a Greatsword 2 or Greatsword 3, I will be dead. So I've got my water combo ready, I blast it, and I use my Fire 2 through it again. I try to land my Comet through it, but they weren't positioned correctly. And at this point they are really low. I am just, I am trying to get the kill here at this point and I, I get blinded on my pull but I use the, I'm gonna use the magnetic charge there, the leap, and that's gonna get me a lot of damage on them. They have weakness for quite some time. I miss my Gale, which is very bad, so that's going to extend this duel for a while because Gale is like a really hard win condition and kill condition for you. But I land a really good natural convergence and that gets some pretty good pressure out there. I go invulnerable, but I stow it early because I want to be progressing this kill. And at this point, yeah, I just need to just need to finish off the kill. But I also don't want to. I don't want to play too risky. I mean, I am in the lead, so I could easily get one shotted if I play too riskily. Uh, I use my Gale into their stability there. That was a pretty bad play. But I have Love Font now, and I'm going to. Just blow a bunch of my yeah here's the earth shield into oh that was yeah so i reflected their sword three into them so that was pretty good there this is a 1v1 versus a sikkim ranger and even though i have a lot of reflex i do have to be very careful against rangers because their great sword and pets can cc me and if i don't have a way to get out of that cc then i'll be dead so i really have to use my invulnerability preemptively 
to survive. And I use my magnetic shield here, very good to get a pull into my leap. They have a little bit of, yeah, rangers have a lot of stability, so it's hard to really get my lightning rod to proc all the time. I pick up my magnetic shield again, which is pretty convenient, so I can use a lot of that defensive ability here. I go into Invuln, but I know that they're going to use the stealth leap with the greatsword, so I move away before they can get into stealth. And at this point, I land a really good gale. They have their stun break and stability now, so I go into Earth to get protection and just to survive. I put up Reflect, and I precast my Fiery Greatsword just to whirl while they're on top of me. I zone with the Greatsword uh, 5 so that they don't get close to me with their Greatsword. And I chase, but we're in a very dangerous location because if I get knocked back into the lava, that would be pretty devastating. So I preemptively put up the swirling winds there and I have to go invulnerable so I don't get knocked. I use my magnetic wave to reflect and I precast my polaric leap into the end of their leap there so that they can't get me with their combo. They go stealth so I have to invuln or I'm going to die and I use the magnetic leap for the basically projectile reflect and I get the kill there. So just rotating between the projectile reflect there is really important. So this is going to be a 1v2 against a Scourge, a Condi Scourge, and I think it's a Condi Ranger. They've got like short bow and traps. So I immediately know that the Condi Scourge is the biggest threat. They have already torments like sticking to me, and it's eight torments, so I really have to get out of there. I swap to water and try to cleanse and heal. But yeah, this Condi Scourge is the biggest threat for sure. So I'm trying to stick to them. And I have my Gale into my Power Vortex and Flame Uprising. And that gets a lot of damage out on the Scourge. And that gets them pretty low. But they have Transfusion, they have Blood Magic, so they're going to survive a little bit. They put down their Elite and I have to use Swirling Winds just to survive from the Ranger. And... I can't even get value out of my water field there because if I stay there I'll just get more condies and just die. So this is a very pressured situation and at this point I see that the Scourge has barriers so I can't really pressure them and I also can't just stay there so I kite out a little bit more. I get a nice little water combo there for some healing so I'm feeling a little bit more confident now. I get the CC and a very good shield throw on the Necro there, gets them pretty low, but I'm getting zoned by the Fear Wall. So this is very dangerous, and I'm getting Condies again. So I'm going to have to go Invuln here, and at this point the, yeah, so Magnetic Wave is up, but they're putting on more Condies, I have to be super safe. My Sigil is on cooldown now, so yeah, I have to play very safe around not having any cleanses up. But I do land a really good Gale into Quantum Strike, and that puts some good damage on the Necro. But I do have the Ranger immobilizing me, the pet is doing damage to me, and I've got to start kiting again. So I'm still putting out pressure though with the Comet, and seeing what I can do because if I let the Necro just heal, then the it's, there's never going to end. So I am on a timer here, more so than they are. I blink out of the torch 5 there from the scourge but that allows them to basically reset so this is a pretty bad situation because now basically all that time I spent getting the necro low got reset quite a bit and they got some artificial sustain from just going out of combat so I go in bone here into the necros elite and my magnetic wave is being used to cleanse so that means I've really got nothing for a while here. I cleanse, there's my sigil. And now I see that I'm actually getting plussed by even more enemies. More just funneling in here. So I'm playing immediately. I'm just getting out of there. I pull Lyric Leap to a neutral mob. And the yeah, they're just chasing really hard. Like these guys are super thirsty. They they're actually chasing me for probably like five minutes before this clip even started so yeah there's there's definitely an intent to kill
and I use my Polaric Leap again to get up these uh, to these like warthogs on the ledge but yeah I can't I really can't fight a 1v5 so I'm just trying to split them up I use my mount to go to terrain over here and it looks like they're not really able to follow me because they're in combat they can't mount they don't know how to do the jumping puzzle so eventually the squad of Asuras decides to leave and I'm left with the Condi Scourge and the Ranger again so I want to go for the Ranger I decide I believe because it felt like the the Necro was maybe a little bit too difficult to kill so I do swap to the Ranger here but the Asuras come back so the the thirsty Asura squad is back for more I use my Polaric Leap to one of the Choya here which is going to help me basically get more distance but yeah I still can't fight them so I'm just trying to kite and I'm going higher and higher on terrain which gives me more of an advantage as I go up more terrain because it allows me to split them so the Asuras they've decided not to chase me anymore and at this point, I can basically isolate them and go for the kill on the ranger because the Condi Scourge has basically left. And that's it. So if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe and consider becoming a patron. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time.